Amazing day, people. It's your boy, Swan Belcher. Today, I want to talk about um, taking over mortgages, OPM, you know, other people's mortgages. So we had a great uh, amount of feedback and engagement in the uh, four-part subject two videos. And today, I want to add on to that, okay? I want to tell you six things that you should not do when it comes to buying houses, subject twos, and taking over mortgages. Let's get into it. So hi, if you guys don't know, and uh, if you're new here, my name is Sawan Belcher. I'm a full-time real estate investor. Definitely go ahead and subscribe and like this video automatically because you already know you're about to get a million dollars worth of game right now. Um, I'm a full-time real estate investor. Um, I got a lot of houses that I buy and hold. Uh, yesterday, I actually just picked up rental property number 50. Okay, so if you're interested in using real estate, to buy, to resell, to create massive amounts of money, or to buy and hold to create um, a large amount of consistent cash flow that you don't have to look over, that can come in every month, that can retire you from your nine to five, <laughs> you're in the right place, okay? Now today I wanna to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which I believe is one of the most powerful exit strategies, excuse me, acquisition strategies, um, for real estate investors, okay? And that's subject two. Now the first thing, before we get into this, is I don't want you to say the words subject to to sellers. Okay, just to let you know what that means, subject to means instead of buying it with a clear title. So uh, typically when you get a property under contract from a seller, you will take it to an attorney or title company and they will go to do a title search. The title search looks up any liens, judgments, or any other encumbrances or, or, or code violations, anything that could hinder you from having a clear title, meaning you having 100% ownership um, uh, and you you know, having zero debt on the property if you choose. Now, with this, we're gonna be buying, with this strategy, subject two, we're gonna be buying the property by taking over the mortgage. So number one, you wanna know that you're not gonna have a clear title. Now, yes, you'll be able to get some type of title insurance, you know, but you're not gonna have a clear title when you buy like this because you're gonna be taking over, you're gonna be buying the property subject to the existing liens that are in place right now. When you're doing this strategy, it's about marketing as always, it's about negotiating and do a great needs analysis with the seller. And then it's also about how you're gonna make the money disposition on the back end. So when you're talking to the seller, this is more of a consultation. Um, this is more of a, a listen than it is a persuade, okay? I don't like to persuade people that subject to is right for them. I like to ask them questions that promote and answer that leads me to believe that subject two is gonna be the best uh, situation for the seller, okay? What I mean is a question that you can ask the seller just so I can understand from your perspective, you know, why don't you wanna list your house with the realtor? Uh, just so I can understand from your perspective, you said that you would sell for, you know, what you owe, you know, why is that? Just so I can understand, are, are you saying that you're like ready to sell right now because you got like another house in mind that you're gonna buy? And I like to ask these questions because number one, if they leave the loan in place, it's gonna be very difficult for them to qualify for a second mortgage. Most banks are looking at DTI um, when it comes to mortgages. So if they already have a thousand dollar, you know, uh, payment going out and they, you know, going to qualify for another thousand dollar loan. A lot of people just don't make that amount of money to qualify for the next one. So if they want to buy another house, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably not going to be good for a subject too. Okay. But if they say, Hey, well, the American dream is, uh, it's, it's not right for me. But why do you say that? When they say something like that, that typically tells you that they either don't like the way, you know, they have to work with the banks. They don't, they can't keep up with some kind of maintenance with the house. They don't believe in some kind of system that's been put in place for home ownership. So that means they don't want to own again. Bing, 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 bing. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Don't use the word subject to simply use questions that lead you to believe that buying their house by leaving the mortgages, mortgage is best for them. Okay. Don't say subject to that's first. Next is do not call the bank. This is very important because um, um, not necessarily that you can't be open and honest with the bank, but they don't really need to know. Okay. 
what the bank wants to do, what their ultimate goal is, is to make money on their money. They want the payments. So there's no need in calling the bank. Now, what if they don't have a login? Ha! Huh. Let's do something magical in, the, in 2022. Let's create a login for the seller. <laughs> Let's go to SunTrust.com or BBNT, wherever they bank at, create a login for them if they don't have it. So that way you can see what the payoff is, you can see what the payment is, and you can also look at the escrow. Very important part, okay? Now, uh, in order for you to determine um, if this deal is gonna be good for you to take over, because just because the seller will allow you to take over the payments, doesn't mean that you should. It needs to be a PITI payment, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, okay? And it needs to have equity and cash flow, okay? Remember that equity is the difference between what they owe and what it can sell for as is, and cash flow is the difference between the monthly payment, okay, and how much um, income the property can generate. Do not call the payment. Get the mortgage statement from the seller if they don't have a login or don't have an active, um, you know, a most recent statement. You can always create a login with them, okay? Next is do not leave the seller's insurance in place, okay? Um, very important key. Now, the first two subject to deals I did, I left the I left the seller's name <laughs> on the deed and I left the insurance. Um, I left the seller's insurance on the uh, you know on the on the house as well. Okay, so I'm teaching you from pure mistakes. Okay, this is this is not just uh, theory education. This is applied knowledge. What happens when something happens to that property? Let's call it a, a tornado. Uh, let's call it uh, um, a tree falling on the house. Let's call it the tenant's children running the water in the tub. Mom, uh, for whatever reason, is in the back with mama, with, with daddy, and the kids get distracted, and now there's water all over the tub, and then there's, there's subfloor issues in the bathroom, and you need to make that insurance claim. If the insurance is still in the borrower's name, the check is going to go to the borrower. Now, look. Think about this. I'm the borrower. Okay. I'm in the 5% of people that need help in this world. And because I'm, I'm hard on time. You come and save my life and take this mortgage off of me. Okay. I don't know what's going on. I just say, hey, have it. This yours. A year later, I get a random check in the mail for $10,000 from my insurance agent with my name on it. Am I going to Call this young black investor that I don't really know from Adam or Eve that helped me out at one point in time in my life? Or am I going to take this to the bank, call it God and pay my tithes on it? I don't want to leave that to chance. <laughs> okay. And, and I don't want you guys to do it either. Okay. Number one, once you get it on the contract, take it to an attorney. Let him write up the paperwork for you. Have him put that property in a truck. Go to your insurance guy. Okay. If you don't have an insurance guy, I can give you mine and have him create a policy for your trust and add the seller, add the borrower on as an additional insured. So whenever that policy gets sent to the mortgage, they see the additional insured is the borrower that does not trigger the due on sale clause. Bing, 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 tip, okay? And also, whenever there's a claim, okay, whenever you have to do a claim, that check will go directly to you and your trust so you can cash it and use it and disperse it as you need to, okay, so you don't get left high and dry and now you're in a problem and have to sell that distress, okay? Um, uh, and, and you just never know. Like most of these loans that you take over, the, the seller's only been in them for, you know, two, three, four, five years. So you got 25 years left on a loan. What about if they pass away? You know, one lady that we bought a house from, turns out she's a meth head and she doesn't answer the phone. So, you know, I would be stuck if I didn't have a limited power of attorney. You know, I'd be stuck if I didn't have the deed in my name and my own insurance. Who knew? So you don't want to get caught up in those situations if you actually want to have long-term success with this strategy, okay? Um, next is do not assign it. Don't assign it. The $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 fee is not worth the 20 year, 25 year, or however long liability that you might have from your borrower that you, excuse me, from your buyer that you sold the contract to, okay? Because by law, the seller sold the house to you, you chose to sell your rights to this person that they don't know. So by law, you um, are liable for anything that happens while they hold this note in the borrower's name, okay? It's no need in taking that risk. You may as well 
just take the benefit of getting an upfront check, a monthly check, and a back end check by selling it on a lease option when your name stays on the deed and you have full control. Okay, does it make sense? So you buy subject two, you buy with OPM, other people's mortgages, you sell on lease option. So that uh, tenant buyer will give you a non refundable down payment, he'll give you monthly payments, and he'll then also give you a back end check at the end when they bring their own loans way better than assigning your subject to contract. Don't do it. Well, at least if you're not selling your subject to me. Okay. Um, so do not say assumption. Do not say assumption to the seller. This is not an assumption. Most people assume that an assumption is when you take the exact amount that they owe, you go to that exact bank that they um, owe from and you get qualified for a new loan from that bank for that exact amount that you owe. That's an assumption. This is not an assumption. The property is, the mortgage is going to stay in the borrower's name. Not an assumption. You're not assuming the debt. You don't want the debt. You want the property. You don't want the risk. You want the control. Okay. Um, uh, do not tell the seller this is a lease option. This is not, okay? And do not, once again, do not tell the seller uh, this is a subject to. Now, um, a lot of the last three was all about how you communicate to the seller um, because that is the most important part about this transaction is what you say and how you say it, okay? And just remember that every seller can and will sell to you is all about what you say to them, okay? And that's the reason why I made the Real Estate Made Easy course. I'm gonna drop a link right here for it just in case you like to know how to buy a couple hundred houses with no money and do the same thing like I do. And until then, I'm gonna see you on the next one, okay? Have an amazing day, peace.